Well, good well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, today we have with us Dovilet Tumbernet, is a researcher from the University of Vilnius in Lithuania. It is not the first time he's, she's here, the second time we, she visits us. She is an expert in, on education, uh, in, on the measure of performance of education system. system. Uh, she is going to speak about that uh, today. Mm -hmm. So we are ready to. Uh, today I will uh, present uh, my research, just three papers. Uh, but these papers are uh, more like application of operation research methods in, in education. So, yeah, uh, three parts, three different uh, papers, and yeah, future research directions. Um, I have uh, one video of what is Lithuania because uh, not everybody knows where is Lithuania and uh, what is Lithuania. It is so small country, but uh, today I did, uh, don't uh, show that video because it takes time. So uh, I think after this presentation, I can share with you this presentation with uh, PDF. And if somebody would like to know more about Lithuania, uh, could uh, just press and to. to watch that uh, video. Um, uh, I am working uh, at Vilnius University. It is a very old university in, in Europe. And uh, it is, I think it is the best university in Lithuania. And um, uh, how I said, uh, I defend my PhD thesis in informatics that in the Data Science and Digital Technology Institute. And now I'm in philosophy faculty, but uh, in the Data Science uh, uh, and Digital Technology Institute, we have a, a quite big uh, research group of, on, on uh, optimization, also on operation research. Uh, if somebody would like to come and visit uh, Vilnius University, you are very <laughs> welcome. Uh, you can just uh, write uh, to me uh, by email and we can arrange. We always are waiting uh, students and professors to visit and to change ideas and collaborate. And so <laughs> if you would like, just write to me. Okay. Now about education. Um, uh, benchmarking in education is uh, not uh, something new. Uh, two, deca uh, two decades we can uh, call like uh, benchmarking era in education. Of course, not only in education, in healthcare and in other public sector, but I am focused on uh, education. Uh, first time in uh, 2004, European Union uh, countries uh, agreed on uh, common benchmarks and objectives and uh, we establish a strategic framework for European co cooperation in education and training 2010. Uh, after that, the new one strategic framework uh, was adopted in 2009. And uh, now this one European education area uh, strategic framework is uh, the, new, the new one uh, since uh, 2021. Uh, all European countries are following uh, this strategic framework. Uh, the extensive use of uh, benchmarking in education can be confirmed uh, by United Nations uh, 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Uh, 17 goals were established by 193 countries. <laughs> if I remember good. And uh, one goal, goal number four is for education. Uh, so, common objectives, benchmark, benchmarks, targets are very uh, common uh, in these two decades. In not only in uh, European countries, but uh, in all world. So, uh, with uh, this context, we, uh, we can mm, use uh, operation research methods to to calculate, to, to optimize, optimize these, these benchmarks. So uh, the first uh, research was uh, made uh, uh, by, uh, during my PhD thesis, uh, during my PhD studies. Uh, yeah, so I 
uh, will uh, now I will present it. it. Uh, how I mentioned before, uh, uh, where, where is the European education strategic framework and um, countries um, agreed on uh, common uh, objectives and uh, these countries uh, established like six uh, indicators uh, how to measure these uh, common objectives. Uh, what does it mean? And uh, oh, sorry. And uh, here you can see a target for 2020. What does it mean? For example, uh, participation in early childhood education uh, should be at least uh, 95 percent until uh, 2020. It's uh, that old strategic framework, but uh, at uh, this time we were uh, working uh, working with uh, this data. Uh, so so uh, we have uh, indicators and targets. We have targets. Uh, that means that it's uh, some average um, uh, target for all countries and uh, to, to, to reach uh, and all countries are asked to reach it uh, until 2020. Um, we can monitor with, uh, for example, six indicators and we can compare uh, over space or over time. It is uh, not uh, very hard to do, but if you want to compare uh, how these countries uh, are performing uh, during time and uh, over space, it's quite a difficult task. Uh, so in my PhD thesis, um, I uh, proposed some methodology uh, how to construct composite indicator. A uh, composite indicator is uh, like uh, 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 you can uh, measure or you can rank uh, according uh, a lot of indicators and you have only like uh, uh, one indicator like a result of, of this. Uh, composite indicators are very common uh, instrument to measure some uh, social phenomena, we can say. And uh, uh, the idea was uh, uh, to uh, propose methodology how to construct composite indicator. Uh, here you can see composite indicators. Profile is like uh, that uh, uh, web uh, uh, graph that, that I showed before. Uh, so we have uh, four stages. Uh, we select uh, indicators, we treat indicators, if, and if we need, we normalize data. Uh, and uh, after that, we have to select weights and uh, uh, function how to aggregate these indicators. Uh, in this example, uh, uh, we select uh, uh, that uh, six indicators I showed before from uh, strategic framework. We didn't do normalization. Uh, we used the fixed and flexible weighting system. I will uh, tell more about this later. And we use uh, additive aggregation. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so the main uh, problem to uh, construct composite indicator is uh, how to select uh, weights and uh, how to select aggregation fun function. Uh, for select weights, oh. mm -hmm. select weights uh, and aggregation function, we have uh, a lot of methods, here yeah, only a few. And um, what we, uh, we test in this uh, 
paper. It's a fixed weighting system. Fixed weighting systems system means that uh, weights are uniform across countries. And the flexible weighting system is uh, uh, that can be different uh, weights uh, for each country. Uh, so the example of a fixed weighting system is a simple addi additive weighting and uh, for flexible weighting system, data envelope analysis. <coughs> this is a formulation. It's like uh, the most simple uh, way to aggregate uh, some indicators in, in one composite indicator. We have uh, uniform uh, weights, W, yeah, uh, that is attached to indicator and it's like additive. So we aggregate uh, indicators in the uh, most simple way. It's fixed weight system. And flexible weighting system could be um, like data envelope analysis uh, when we optimize uh, each uh, country performance and uh, in this way weights are different across countries to get the maximum maximum value of performance uh, when we construct composite indicator we don't have uh, inputs what is uh, common in the da model so we use the use benefit of doubt model uh, and uh, we don't use inputs. The inputs are like uh, equal for, for one. Uh, so the main difference between uh, fixed and uh, fixed and, uh, and flexible weighting system is uh, uh, that uh, in the flexible weighting system uh, weights are endogenous and may differ may be may be uh, different across uh, countries and uh, in uh, uh, in fix in, in, in uh, fixed weighting system uh, it's uh, all uh, weights are, are uniform ac across countries and uh, they are decided uh, before the construct of composite indicator indicator uh, so the fixed uh, weighting system method method is orientated uh, to uh, performance assessment like uh, control and DA. Uh, the composite indicator uh, constructed uh, based on DA. It is uh, is focused on uh, performance management like improvement improvement. Uh, so what was the problem uh, with? Uh, apply DEA in this, uh, with this data set. Uh, we got that uh, uh, two, two quarters, uh, two, uh, um, 66 percent uh, of uh, countries was efficient. So when we have uh, so a lot of efficient countries, uh, that results uh, equal to one. Uh, we cannot rank countries because 66% uh, uh, have the same uh, uh, measure. Like. And the uh, other problem was uh, uh, that uh, we had uh, six pl plus two indicators. We have at all eight indicators and uh, a lot of indicator uh, was uh, uh, weight was uh, uh, equal to zero. That means that uh, these uh, indicators uh, were ignored in the composite indicator. So, uh, what we have, what we decided to do, uh, to add weight restriction to increase uh, discrimination power and uh, to ensure that uh, all indicators will be in uh, that composite indicator. Uh, here you can see three types of uh, weight restrictions. Uh, equal pure weights like uh, when uh, it, uh, equal weights uh, between uh, all uh, indicators. We use this one and the last one is uh, uh, are 
A are the first type uh, restriction that is uh, incorporate uh, uh, indicator. Uh, so uh, what we got, um, uh, we got that uh, saw model that um, uh, fixed weighting system model with equal weights uh, gives exactly the same ranking as uh, the model with, uh, with equal pure weights, with uh, equal weights uh, between uh, indicators. Uh, so we can see that uh, this confirms the possibility to use uh, DA model models for constructing composite indicators uh, as an alternative uh, for traditional uh, fixed weighting system. And um, uh, we proposed uh, to use uh, this uh, uh, sigma uh, coefficient, like the new type of weight restriction uh, that allows uh, to depart from fixed from fixed weighting system to flexible weighting system. Uh, with this uh, formulation, we can move from a fixed weighting system to flexible weighting system. Uh, we can uh, choose. Uh, a value of sigma from 0 to 1. Uh, yeah, I will show the example. Um, when uh, sigma equal 1, the DA model corresponds to formulation with equal weights for all uh, indicators. That is uh, on the left side. And uh, when uh, this parameter, parameter, parameter equal to zero, uh, the least restrict, uh, restrictive case corresponds to the DA model without weight restriction. So we have a wide range uh, of uh, results. In one side, in left side, we got results uh, seem like uh, a fixed weighting system. And on the uh, right side, we, we got uh, uh, results like uh, DA without weight restrictions. Uh, and we can uh, choose that uh, sigma value between 0 and 1 and have uh, uh, that flexibility of what, what we want to, to have, what we need to have. Uh, so conclusion from this uh, paper was that the model with uh, weight restriction and new flexibility parameter, uh, parameter allows uh, transition from, uh, fixed, from fixed weighting system to flexible weighting system. And uh, yeah, that was the, the main idea. Okay, we can move. <laughs> Uh, the second um, uh, paper was also in the education area and uh, this time we also working with uh, the same educa education, training, education and training strategic framework, uh, but we try to evaluate performance during time by using uh, Malquisting index. Uh, so the objective of this study uh, was to assess the evaluation of performance of European countries in the period from uh, 2006 until 2015. Uh, the framework uh, was based on the construction also of a composite indicator uh, yeah, and uh, evaluation of performance uh, uh, change over time was done using uh, global Mal Malquist index and it, an innovative formulation it was proposed to estimate performance against uh, a non-convex meta frontier. Uh, okay, I will go, <laughs> I think uh, this uh, formulation you understand more than I, so I just show for you and um, yeah. <laughs> Um, the original prom formulation of Malkvist index does not satisfy the circle of property. That means that values of index between uh, the time period t and t plus uh, 2 cannot be received from values of productivity index uh, uh, between t and uh, t plus 1, as well as t and uh, 
t1 plus 1 uh, and t plus 2. And uh, we have uh, three periods like t, t, t1, and t2. Uh, we used the concept of the meta frontier that envelops all data. Uh, that assumes, uh, assumes uh, that each period P has its own best practice frontier TP, uh, but there is uh, uh, also is a meta frontier T TM which envelopes all individ individual uh, period, period frontiers. Uh, so, yeah, proposed a global Malkvist index. Uh, uh, after that, uh, uh, was proposed uh, specified uh, meta technology and introduced a binary variable in the model uh, to select only one of uh, the groups where the objective function will be maximized. And we proposed um, the use of mixed integer linear programming formulation to evaluate the performance of uh, unit key against the non-convex meta frontier of technology TM. Uh, so we have a, a global Malkvist index, uh, but uh, we use uh, this uh, this uh, model to estimate uh, the efficiency. And uh, Malkvist uh, global Malkvist index could be uh, decomposed as as it is done. Uh, I cannot explain the formulations, <laughs> but maybe you can. No, okay. ah, I'm so uh, we have uh, this global Malkvist index with non convex meta frontier, but uh, we construct like uh, composite indicators. That's, that means that we don't have uh, inputs, uh, so we use the benefit of DAO. Uh, approach that mean uh, that uh, inputs equal, uh, all inputs equal to to one, and we move to to this formulation without uh, without inputs, not without inputs, uh, with inputs equal to one, uh, and uh, we use the same data as before. It is uh, for European countries. Uh, uh, we have uh, like. Uh, T1, T2, T3, and T4, like uh, four points in time. And uh, we have uh, six, six indicators. Um, here is a map of countries and uh, data for 2015. As we see, uh, countries are very different uh, in, in uh, uh, and reach with, uh, with goals that are in the strategic, strategic framework. Uh, for example, uh, Netherlands uh, uh, reached, reached all, all six goals in 2015, while uh, uh, Romania, Bulgaria and Hungary uh, doesn't achieve none of uh, these, these goals. Uh, yeah, you can see results of uh, Malkvist index in, in the period of, from uh, uh, 26, uh, 2006 and 2015. Uh, the first here is uh, for all period and here is uh, for each period, for each of periods. It is a uh, uh, global Malkvist index and uh, decompose it to the parts. So, uh, what we got uh, uh, in green, you, uh, results in green presents uh, uh, increase more than uh, two percent uh, performance, and uh, in red is uh, decline uh, uh, more than one percent during all all time. Uh, so. The best results uh, can be seen in Bulgaria, Germany, Greece, Latvia, and Portugal. We are at the bottom in the beginning, at the 2006, and we put efforts and uh, go up. 
uh, the war situation is for Romania, it uh, was uh, increased and after that decline and uh, uh, and uh, Italy also was uh, decline, stable, stable, um, uh, decline is like uh, for all period and it is stable, stable and uh, decline. And Belgium, uh, so, so, that was first. And uh, the last uh, paper, the new, new one, is uh, we would like, uh, we wanted to show uh, when uh, this, before these two papers was about uh, effectiveness, if we called in, in this co concepts, when we don't have inputs, only outputs. And in this paper, we uh, wanted to compare efficiency and effectiveness. So efficiency is uh, do, uh, doing things right and effectiveness is doing the right things. Uh, both uh, concepts are very important for, for good man man managing. Uh, so uh, the objective of this study was to estimate the efficiency and effectiveness of education systems uh, from perspective of equity in European member states. Uh, the conceptual framework was proposed to estimate performance in relation to educational inclusion and fairness. Uh, the evaluation of performance was done using uh, DA approach based on the direction distance function model and the application focused on all key stages of uh, education. Uh, but today I will present results only of uh, uh, primary education due to lack of time and uh, uh, primary education is like uh, the first step, step in formal education where segregation could start. So this uh, paper is more from social science but we used uh, this uh, operation research uh, methods. Uh, so educational effectiveness uh, can be defined as uh, distance between observed outputs and, uh, and uh, a set of desired goals. And uh, efficient systems uh, are that, that systems that consumes at least inputs to produce the most outputs. Uh, equity in education can be defined in many ways. Uh, we used the concept of uh, OECD uh, and uh, equity in education we evaluate uh, from two dimensions like fairness and inclusion. Inclusion uh, can be defined as ensuring that all students get necessary skills and fairness uh, ensuring that all students regardless of ha background have equal opportunities to achieve learning success. success. Uh, these uh, two aspects, inclusion and fairness, is uh, from o OECD conceptual framework. Uh, so education systems in terms of inclusion and fairness can be effective or non-effective, uh, efficient or non-efficient. Um, we propose a conceptual framework, we can say. Uh, uh, Effectiveness is in vertical and efficiency in horizontal. And uh, uh, countries or education system can be optimal in this side. Uh, that means that the system, system uses a reasonable amount of resources and is uh, fair and inclu inclusive. Uh, it is the best uh, option from economic point of view. Uh, yeah. And uh, selective education system oh, is in this corner. That, that means uh, that uh, uh, system u uses many resources but is selective in, ter in terms of uh, inclusiveness and fairness. Uh, 
that means that uh, resources are used uh, not for whole population, but for some parts of, of population. Uh, excessive edu education system. Site. <laughs> the system uses many resources, and this inclusive and fair. Uh, that means uh, that uh, countries uh, use a lot of resources, and this uh, uh, fair and inclusive. Uh, these results could be achieved with uh, less resources, uh, but uh, rich countries may be willing to allocate as much resources as we can. Uh, so. If country is rich, uh, it, she, it can, it can uh, allocate resources uh, how much it can. And the deprived education system uh, uses use uh, uh, lack of resources, and also it does not uh, include and fair. Uh, it could uh, the efficiency score for for. For this uh, 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 side of countries, it uh, looks like a good, like efficient system, but, uh, but it lacks uh, equity. That means that it is not enough uh, resources for, for education. Uh, it is a very typical situation for uh, middle or low uh, economic uh, development countries. Mm. Uh, so, in uh, this uh, research, we have uh, outputs that are desirable and undesirable. Uh, for example, uh, percentage uh, of resilient students or, percent, uh, or access to education is uh, like desirable outputs, uh, outputs and we need to maximize them. And uh, example, variation, dispersion in uh, academic scores, the scores is uh, undesirable output and we need to minimize. Uh, so we use the data envelope analysis approach based on directional distance function model uh, that uh, allow us uh, at the same time uh, minimize undesirable outputs and maximize desirable outputs. Uh, the difference between uh, left and right side. Uh, left side is uh, for effectiveness and uh, right side is for efficiency. Uh, the main difference is uh, when we uh, calculate a score of effectiveness, we uh, don't use uh, output uh, indic uh, input indicators uh, or input indicators are equal to, to one. And on efficiency, uh, we have inputs and, and outputs. Uh, we evaluate uh, all uh, uh, five main uh, education levels. And today I will present results only of, of uh, primary education. And uh, in that paper you can, can find all, all results. Uh, so we used the uh, uh, input Input is uh, expenditure per 1,000 student in primary education. And outputs, we have undesirable outputs and desirable outputs. Uh, undesirable outputs are standard deviation of uh, PILS and TIMS, TIMS uh, scores. And uh, these uh, outputs we need to minimize. And uh, desirable outputs like uh, percent, percentage of resilient students in uh, Pearls and Teams uh, assessment, and uh, these outputs we need to maximize. <coughs> so we have inputs and outputs. Uh, in, uh, uh, in measure uh, efficiency, we used inputs and outputs, and in uh, measure of effectiveness, we use input as uh, equal to one and uh, the same outputs like here. Um, in uh, in uh, this uh, research, we, we wanted to look at the differences between uh, post-socialist and all democracy EU member states. Uh, European Union, uh, we have some 
uh, purpose, sorry, uh, that uh, all countries for convergence of all countries. Uh, and uh, what we can see that uh, still very, that still very big differences are between uh, post-socialist and all democracy country, countries in EU. Yeah, in red are post-socialist EU countries and in, in blue are all democracy EU member states. So the results. Uh, effectiveness and efficiency can vary from zero to one and uh, blue dots uh, represent uh, all democracy EU member states and red dots are for post-socialist uh, European countries. Uh, what can we see? That uh, post-socialist and all democracy EU member states move towards different positions. You can see like uh, blue dots are in one side and red dots are more on the other side. And uh, another conclusion was that post-socialist countries do not represent a single Central and Eastern Euro positions. Uh, countries are not in uh, close each other with uh, uh, red dots. We are in uh, different sides. So let's look at uh, post-socialist EU member states. Uh, we got that uh, Bulgaria and Hung uh, Hungary are in a deprived education position in this uh, right corner. Uh, that uh, that uh, means that these countries used uh, lack of resources and also lack of inclusion and fairness. That is a typical situation for uh, lower development countries. Uh, and. Uh, uh, Bulgaria has extremely low uh, funding for primary education. It is three times less than European average. And the uh, other main uh, problem in uh, inclusion and fairness is the segregation of uh, Roma students uh, who drop out from school uh, much often than other uh, students and attend to kindergarten uh, less, less often. And uh, Slo Slovakia uh, is uh, a little bit uh, uh, more to the uh, left side. That's mean that uh, uh, Slovakia spend uh, more money. We have a bigger founding in primary education, but still lack uh, equ equity like inclusion and fairness. Uh, in Slovakia, Slovakia has uh, the same problem uh, like uh, Hungary and Bulgaria. It's uh, uh, Roma kids and uh, students who live in rural areas. Area that means that equity in this country is uh, not uh, not uh, not high. Uh, it is segregation between uh, Roma kids and uh, other kids and. Uh, the segregation between uh, students who live in uh, cities and in rural areas. And uh, now we can look at uh, all democracy member states. Uh, Finland and Netherlands are in the optimal position. That means that uh, efficiency score and, and effectiveness score are almost one. It's uh, very high. And uh, these countries are uh, in optimal position from economical point of view. Uh, that means that um, countries use reasonable amount of resources and uh, are inclusion and fair. Uh, in other side, in other corn from uh, Netherlands and Finland, we can uh, find France. Uh, France can be uh, assigned an intermediate position between selective and excessive system. That means uh, that uh, uh, France used quite a lot of resources for primary education, but still uh, lack uh, uh, of equity. 
and uh, conclusions. Uh, Post-socialist and all democracy EU member states move toward different positions for ensuring equity in primary education. And uh, post-socialist countries uh, demonstrate high efficiency with lower level of effectiveness comparing to all democracy EU member states. But uh, that efficiency is not due to some good uh, uh, political measures, but it is due to the lack of resources for, for education, for, for primary education in this example. And uh, post-socialist countries do not represent uh, one single group of uh, Central and uh, Eastern Europe uh, position for ensuring equity in primary education. Uh, so social segregation and minority education became uh, one of problem issues in post-socialist countries. And so that was three papers. And now a little bit about uh, future directions. Uh, now we are working with uh, that new strategic framework uh, that started started since 2021 uh, and uh, we collaborate with Jose and Inna and uh, we try to set uh, country specific targets that are attainable and uh, represent uh, best practice following benchmarking approach based on the indicators declared in that new strategic framework. Uh, so it is quite uh, new <laughs> and we still are working on, on, on it. And uh, maybe one uh, more direction could be uh, measures of performance of education sector, not only on uh, uh, this uh, common objective of European countries, uh, but also on uh, equity as uh, gender equity. It's uh, also quite a new area in, uh, in benchmark studies. That's all. <laughs> Questions? I have a question about your last paper. I don't understand quite well the input you have used. Input uh, is uh, money. <laughs> yes, but okay. input is supposed Input is expenditure per 1,000 students in primary education. It's one indicator for primary education. And why, why are you assuming that a smaller expenditure is better? Uh, small expenditure is better. If it is an input, uh -huh. smaller expenditure is better. Yeah, but we, when we have efficiency and effect, if we would have only efficiency, uh, we, uh, we would say that if uh, it's efficient, that means that a smaller uh, amount of resources of money is better. That we can see only one part. But when we add uh, effectiveness, effectiveness is without, uh, in, without input, then we can see is it equal or not equal. Uh, we can see other side like uh, not only, only from money side like, but uh, we can see uh, d uh, does the country uh, reach the goal? Like uh, can country, that education system, um, uh, with this money, uh, we have equal, equal education system. When we have two dimensions like effectiveness and efficiency, we can add another. Yes, I, I understand that when you are measuring effectiveness, mm -hmm. uh, you are interested in having a, a big value for the for the input. But I don't understand that in a Efficiency. For efficiency, why we use money? Uh, no, no, not why, why you use money. When uh -huh. you are interested in reducing in redu the money you spend for the... I think we all want to reduce uh, money expenditure. We can, uh, not in primary education, but uh, I think in secondary education, Luxembourg is uh, 
spend a lot of money and uh, cannot achieve these uh, goals. And this in uh, that side that, yeah, can, uh, the, the, you can put a lot of money, but uh, don't uh, achieve uh, this, this like, like goals. Uh, why we use the input uh, expenditure? Uh, we tried to collect uh, more data. We tried to have uh, uh, quality of teachers. Uh, age of teachers, uh, mm, uh, some more, how many teachers for students, some ratio between uh, students and teachers. Uh, but after, uh, in education, it is uh, very hard to measure, um, for example, ratio between teachers and students, because every country count in little bit different way teachers uh, that uh, hours uh, how how much how many spent to to classroom so we left only this one but at the beginning we have more inputs for to, to measure it. I, I think that she means that if you get the same results with less money you are more efficient yeah, that efficient. your goal <laughs> is to reduce <laughs> spending money but if you get the same results in mass and all the things they measure with less uh, uh, expenditure, maybe you are more efficient using this money. Yeah, like really but not that your goal is to reduce the money you spend in education. Mm -hmm. I, I guess that is just the idea. Yeah, the best. It's, it's difficult that you tell someone you have yeah. to spend less money in order to be more efficient. Yeah. <laughs> In any case, okay, thank you. More questions? I have oh, one curiosity, general curiosity. One general curiosity. When we carry out the application, we do know it very often, but when we, we do it, we have the impression that the results are, are very unrealistic. For example, when you are setting targets, mm -hmm. targets are always very demanding. Mm -hmm. My question is, do you feel the same when you do your applications? Do you? Um, what? <laughs> I cannot understand fully. Yeah. You understand my question? Uh, not fully understand. Can, uh, can you repeat? When we use real data for yeah. an application, mm -hmm. for example, we are setting target, mm -hmm. we sometimes have the impression that the targets we set are very and realistic, Not and very, very demanding. Mm -hmm. my, my question is if your experience is, is the same. Yeah, it is, it is the same and sometimes... Uh, it and, is, and what can we do to, to avoid that? Yeah, it is, when it is just producing some goods, like uh, it is uh, very um, clear, but when it is uh, some social phenomenon like uh, education, and uh, you can get that target, but you can understand that it's unrealistic and you cannot uh, achieve it. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> but what can we do with that? I, I, I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, we, uh, we, uh, we, we have... Think about that. Mm -hmm. So, no more question. That's all. Thank you. Thank you.